Russia's obviously held the line against the Western hegemony and a Western hegemonic uh, agenda, both in Eastern Europe and in the Middle East. And it really does plough the depths of credulity when they are talking about Russia being a force for instability in the world. You would think it was Russia responsible for the proliferation of terrorism across the Middle East and by extension the world with the rise of ISIS in recent years. And you would think it was Russia from where the global economic crisis of 2008 emanated, which brought the world to the brink of bankruptcy. So it is really wishful thinking compounded by delusion in this document, a document that could have come straight from the 1950s in a Hollywood uh, anti-Russian Red Scare movie. The policy being followed by NATO and the EU to economically and militarily isolate Russia and weaken Russia is clearly failing. And there's also a domestic agenda at work here. Right now, certainly in the UK, there's a debate on going on about Britain's failure, the British government's failure to meet its 2% NATO uh, um, obligations with regards to its defence spending. NATO guidelines stipulate that each NATO member state should, uh, should try to ensure that uh, they spend 2% of GDP every year on defence. The British government, uh, the Tory administration, has uh, refused to commit to that, certainly within the next economic cycle. And so this is designed, I think, to put pressure on them to fulfil that obligation uh, stipulated by NATO. So there's a domestic and obviously a clearly a fierce ideological uh, motive behind this document, which no one really can take seriously given its contents. The relations are worse now than they've ever been, and certainly probably not been as bad as this since the height of the Cold War in the 1950s. But these ideologues who occupy uh, Chatham House, they believe that the only policy and the only solution is to uh, heighten the confrontation rather than roll back and do some serious uh, reflecting on the role of the West and their ideology in precipitating the confrontation. We are living in a unipolar world. That unipolarity is now being challenged by Russia and China, and they cannot uh, comprehend a world in which uh, there's a multipolar alternative, which every state and its rights, legitimate economic and security interests are upheld. And this is bringing the world to the brink of disaster and more and more chaos, as we're seeing uh, both in Eastern Europe, uh, in the Middle East, and economically on a global basis.